I want to put forward a hypothesis here. Um, a hypothesis that I realize nobody else is putting out there, but I'm only doing it because I can't really figure out why nobody else is doing this. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is uh, because for weeks now, I feel like I've been waiting for somebody else to say this, somebody else more likely. Uh, somebody in the Beltway Press, for example, who obsessively covers Washington. Uh, but so far, nobody has been saying it, and so I feel like I have to. I fully expect that this will be debunked, that there is something else going on here that I just don't see that will disprove my hypothesis. But we have been trying for weeks now on our staff to disprove it, and we just can't. So again, I realize nobody else really wants to say this, but I'm just going to say it. I think that John Boehner is really bad at his job. John Boehner is the top Republican in Washington, Speaker of the House, third in line for the presidency. He is running the only part of the government that Republicans control. And I realize this will probably sound rude, like I am being insulting or attacking toward Mr. Boehner. That is not at all how I mean it. I just mean it specifically in terms of his job performance thus far. I think he is really outstandingly bad at his job. I think that everything he's done so far has, what's the opposite of the Midas touch? Let me just give you the evidence, and let's just start with today. Today, John Boehner went to RNC headquarters. He apparently had some sort of meeting there, and afterwards, he called a press conference. Clearly, he thought that he had something to say that was going to nail the president on the president's newly released budget. He was going to go after Obama. He was going to make headlines. He was going to score big political points today. So John Boehner purposely sought out the press. He gathered everybody around him, and then this is what he said to the cameras. Over the last two years since President Obama has taken office, the federal government has added 200,000 new federal jobs. Uh, and uh, and it, if uh, some of those jobs are lost in this, so be it. So be it. This, this is evidence for the um, John Boehner is bad at his job hypothesis uh, for a few reasons. First, uh, what he said today is not true. And while everybody should avoid making statements that aren't true whenever possible, if your job title is Speaker of the House, you should probably extra doubly, triply avoid making statements that are not true. Since President Obama has taken office, the federal government has added 200,000 new federal jobs. Not true. Total, utter, 100% bullpucky, actually. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which keeps track of these things, darn bureaucrats. When Barack Obama came into office, there were roughly 2.79 million federal employees. According to the latest figures available, there are now roughly 2.85 million federal employees. That would be an increase of about 58,000 new federal jobs, which is not even close to what Mr. Boehner said, which was 200,000. Also, for the record, proportional to the population, the size of the federal government is at something like a 50-year low right now just in case you care. But even, even without that context, John Boehner with his made up 200,000 number uh, is just not telling the truth. But beyond that, John Boehner didn't just say something untrue about President Obama today. What he said about President Obama and jobs was that if Republican policies cause job losses, then, and I quote, so be it. So be it. Sort of infinitely quotable, isn't it? So be it. So be it. Maybe so be it for him, but not so be it for the people who are losing their jobs. If you are the Speaker of the House, it is bad to be wrong in public. But it is really, really bad to make headlines for having been wrong in public with a message that is 180 degrees opposite of what your party's message is supposed to be. John Boehner has now gone from where are the jobs to job losses? So be it. But this is, I mean, today is just the latest evidence. This is kind of the way it has been going for him as speaker. This is the basis of the John Boehner is bad at his job hypothesis. Republicans have been in control of the House for about a month and a half now. And it has been one disaster after another. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad month and a half for John Boehner. The very first day, the very first day that the Republicans were in control, on day one, there was the very well publicized constitution reading failure. You remember the, the pages that stuck together in the three ring binder and all the other passages that were just left out because the Republicans apparently didn't like them? That was just the start. During that first week, there was also the swearing in failure. 
thing where two of their own members weren't properly sworn in, but they cast votes on the House floor anyway. That was embarrassing. Then came the Republican pledge to um, always assert constitutional authority for everything they wanted to do, right? This is this new rule. They would cite a specific passage of the Constitution for every bill they proposed. It was not true of the very first three bills they proposed. They said they would do it, and then the first three things they introduced, they broke the rule. And ever since then, they've just kept blowing it off. Just this week, House Democrats called out Republicans for still continuing to, to violate this constitutional authority rule that is their own rule and is brand new. Then there was the famed cut-go program, a, 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 a promise to cut spending for every bill that adds to the deficit. Under John Boehner, Republicans made this promise and then promptly exempted their very first bill from it. Under John Boehner, Republicans initially proposed, uh, promised that they would post online a list of members who attended every committee hearing. So you'd know if your member was doing his or her job and showing up for work. They made that promise, then they decided that they would not do it after all. And of course, there's the everything is about jobs, jobs, jobs failure. Under John Boehner, they have consistently promised that everything they want to do in the House is about jobs, jobs, and nothing but jobs. House Republicans promptly introduced three separate high-profile sweeping anti-abortion bills instead of working on jobs. Then there were the uh, dueling State of the Union responses. Right? Speeches from two separate members of the Republican Party, both billed by CNN as official State of the Union responses. Basic legislating has also proved quite challenging under John Boehner's leadership. Last week, Republicans, who again, they control the House, they suffered three legislative losses in the span of 24 hours under John Boehner. Three bills that they put on the agenda that they wanted to bring to the floor and not one of them passed. Probably their most high-profile blunder thus far under John Boehner has been the failed pledge to cut $100 billion from the budget in their first year. Under John Boehner, they walked that back almost immediately after taking office. Then they settled on about mm, $30 billion. And then after an emergency meeting last week, they pumped that number up to $61 billion. What they promised was 100. No, sorry, didn't mean it. And now today, more. This is, the, this is the kind of thing that Beltway Media supposedly loves, but so far nobody's really saying beep about it. Under John Boehner, Republicans pledged to bring open rules back to the House, essentially meaning that, that Democrats would be able to offer amendments on bills and they wouldn't limit debate. After breaking this pledge for most of the last few weeks, Republicans under John Boehner today finally decided to allow open rules. What they got was more than 400 amendments on their spending bill. 400. So far, they have gotten through approximately four of them, four of more than 400. And one of those amendments is a big one-finger salute to John Boehner from his own party. Mr. Boehner is one of the Republicans who wants to spend $3 billion more billion on a random extra engine that the Pentagon does not want. The fighter jet in question has an engine. This is a second extra engine for a plane that's already got an engine. Full disclosure, GE, one of our parent companies, helps make that engine. The military does not want that engine. They have said they do not want it. But John Boehner really, really, really wants to buy them anyway. And today, a bipartisan group of House members, including two freshman Republicans, just elected, they came together to tell Mr. Boehner, um, Mr. Speaker, you're wrong. Speaker Boehner's own Republicans, including freshmen, are revolting over him wanting to dump billions more taxpayer dollars into something the military explicitly says it really doesn't want. And he's doing that while he is trying to attack President Obama for wasteful spending, with $3 billion of inexplicable defense pork hanging around his neck as Speaker, hung there by his own party. Being the Speaker of the House is a constitutional position. You are third in line to the presidency, and you have a constitutional responsibility to conduct the business of the House. You have a lot of very sober responsibilities. In real terms, though, day to day, you function as the leader of your party in Congress. And for the Republicans this year, Mr. Boehner is the only constitutional officer of any rank who is a Republican. John Boehner is the Republican Party's guy in Washington. And when you look at the evidence, regardless of what you think about the Republicans' agenda, whether you are for it or against it, I think that John Boehner is bad at his job. 
there is one other way to look at the job of being speaker. One other way that a speaker can be can succeed, even if they can't uh, get things passed, and even if they're not good at message discipline, and even if they're not good at party organizational things. One other way that a speaker could succeed is just by sort of being famous, uh, being the face of the party, having enough personal charisma and personal appeal to just be a celebrity Republican and have people like you and respect you as a figurehead, like you for, for who you are and for what kind of person you are. Maybe, maybe he's going for that. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> no, Gimpy, why are we such criers? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You could be Speaker of the House. <laughs> Things are not working out for John Boehner message-wise, legislating-wise, party discipline-wise, or what he's famous for-wise. The Bush family is openly mocking him on network television for crying too much. Is there something that John Boehner is doing that he's great at that I'm just not seeing? Joining us now is Ezra Klein, columnist for The Washington Post and Newsweek, also an MSNBC contributor. Mr. Klein, it is nice to see you again. Thanks for being here. Good evening, Rachel. Is there something that John Boehner is doing as a legislative leader that he's doing great at that I am just not seeing? He's not been running a very tight ship, but I guess you could make two arguments here. One is that some of the things that he's failing at are attempts to restrain his own party. So when you said that he brought down the pledge to cut $100 billion, they went through a whole thing. It was an annualized pledge, and it was because they were only cutting for the last seven months of or six months of 2011. But I am perfectly happy to see them not cut $100 billion from discretionary, the domestic discretionary budget in the middle of the year, and that means nobody checks whether or not my meat is safe. So I, I think he's doing a good job on that front. And then the second piece, you know, you see that spending bill tonight with 400 amendments. Boehner is doing something difficult here. He's trying to run a more open house. He's trying to let people do more dissent and, and propose more amendments. Pelosi ran a very, very tight ship, and you can see that as a good thing. It certainly got her bills through, or you can see it as a, as a bad. Boehner is arguing it was a bad. I think he will get rid of this pretty soon because it turns out it is hard to run an open house, but it is a principled position, and if it makes bad policy go through more slowly, I'm not going to spend a lot of time arguing against it. But so what you're arguing is essentially that you don't like what the Republicans want to do, so it might be good for the country that they're bad at doing it. And I think if you took a value-neutral approach to what the Republicans are doing, you could judge, even in your analysis, that their incompetence um, is showing, uh, and that if they did want to accomplish what they said they wanted to accomplish, they maybe could have picked somebody who'd be better at it. Is that Nancy right? Pel Nancy Pelosi is probably one of the most effective speakers of the House we've ever had. She ran bills through that place like just about nobody expected and nobody had seen. She barely ever lost a vote. In fact, I'm not sure if she did offhand. John Boehner is no Nancy Pelosi. And if you are a Republican who wants to see your party's legislation move swiftly and effectively through the House, if you want to see tough votes like health care push through, it is hard to see Boehner being able to do that. And I think the real illustrative moment here was when Boehner failed to say to the Tea Party folks, listen, we are going to cut $32 billion this year because that is what we can manage and we're going to do more next year. You think of how Pelosi had to manage liberal disappointment on things like the public option in order to get big priorities through. When it really comes push to shove, it doesn't look like Boehner has that type of control over his own members, partially perhaps due to how he runs the place, partially due perhaps to who his members are. So that means that when it comes down to the really tough work of being leader, getting your people to sign on to a tough compromise in order to govern, I don't think if I were a Republican, I'd be terrifically confident in Banner's ability to do that tonight. Ezra, in policy terms, this bill that they've got more than 400 amendments to um, today, this is their big spending bill. This is their big continuing resolution. I mean, they've gotten through four of their 400 amendments so far. Do, isn't this sort of a, 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 we have to pass this piece of policy. I mean, they can't just spend, I mean, at this pace, 40 years working on this ne next, this one next bill, can they? I have never seen anybody try to slow the House down, so it's actually slower than the Senate, but we appear to be watching that happen right now. They do need to pass this. So the, quick, the quick background on this is that the House didn't pass a budget for this year. They passed a quick continuing resolution such that it funded the government through March. And if we don't pass another one in March, the government doesn't have money. It doesn't get funded. We can't keep things open. People can't keep doing their jobs. And when they talk about the fact that uh, public employees, it doesn't matter if they lose their jobs, you know what? Those are real jobs. Those last couple of jobs reports we've had when they've not been good enough, 
Usually private sector has been pretty good. When the Republicans are hammering Obama saying where are the jobs, the things dragging those reports down is private, is I'm sorry, public, state, local, and federal employees losing their jobs. And the Republicans in those moments realize that those are real jobs with a real impact on the economy. So we shut down the government and more to the point going forward, if we lose a lot of those jobs, it's going to have a real economic impact. It drains demand out of it. It puts people out of work, puts more people in competition for the few jobs there are. It's a real problem. So be it. Um, Ezra Klein, columnist for The Washington Post and Newsweek and an MSNBC contributor. It's great to have you back, Ezra. Thanks for helping us. Great to be here.